While well, Star Citizen aims to offer a first-person universe of possibilities, at the center of it has always been you and your spaceship. And over the years of development, testing, feedback, and iteration, there have been many changes to the combat and traversal experience. And in the upcoming Alpha 323, the biggest and most anticipated of those makes their presence known with the arrival of Master Modes. And with that comes additional changes to precision targeting, weapon balance, gimbal use, and more. What are Master Birds? So Master Birds is a way for us to really kind of capitalize on what the ships are. Basically, Master Modes are a new game feature that uh, change all the combat experience inside the, inside the game. So you have a mode for fighting in and a mode for flying from place to place then. A rework of the flight and combat system to essentially try and solve a lot of the problems that players I've had with the flight experience. You can decide if you want to be in full combat mode or you're, you're just in transit or you want to get out of a situation as quick as possible. Fire. Master mode is the thing that makes ship combat exciting and making sure that the ships that you have in the game perform in the roles that we have envisioned for them. Since uh, CitizenCon, we've been bringing Master Modes into Arena Commander. Progress has been quite good, showing off the new modes and letting people get their hands on it. Collecting the feedback, seeing how players respond to that online, by monitoring how players react on social channels. Uh, we've been testing internally a lot. It's a very limited selection of ships, but even so, people seem to like it. So we've taken that feedback and carried on making progress and adapting it all to the rest of the ships as well. We've been watching how players play the game, monitoring analytics, putting it all together and sharing it with the devs who need to see it. How the hell do you go about converting 200 chips to be Unfortunately, there's only really one way to do it, and uh, that's to not get too intimidated by the number. A team effort, we're uh, just cracking for it, really. The difficult part, of course, especially as a designer, is try to uh, understand the new uh, game dynamics that uh, the, the game system creates, especially in an environment like the PU and then try to be able to deliver the proper game experience for every ship with a, you know, a different tuning. And that's quite difficult, but that's also what uh, is really interesting about bringing up a new feature. So we're moving each individual ship into an archetype and we're going to rebalance that ship to the archetype as a starting point. And then basically, once that's complete, we're going to add the individuality into each ship. Each ship has been given a full refresh and we've, we've looked at every ship in the game, assigned them a base archetype so that you know what you're getting into from, from the get-go. All ships, based on how big they are and what kind of purpose they serve, will get an archetype type assigned to them. A typical archetype is a snub fighter. Very, very small, very agile, but it cannot dish out a lot of damage and it can also not receive a lot of damage before it pops. Light fighter. Very maneuverable, decent weapon loadout, and it's basically there for agility engagements. Medium fighter. Pretty agile for its size, but it has a lot more offensive firepower. Target destroyed. Heavy fighter. They don't maneuver well, but when you happen to be at the front of them, you can die very, very fast. Now these are basic tuning archetypes that we have for our fighter ships class, and all ships in that size will be assigned to one of these things. However, based on the ship and what the purpose of the ship is, we have variations of that. For example, we have the interceptor variant of these tunings. This is a tuning variation that can apply to any of these archetypes. An interceptor tuning for a ship means that this ship exchanges the agility. Um, with agility, we mean the rotation rate and the lateral strafing accelerations simply for speed. So they will not be able to turn their velocity back off much. They will not be able to rotate much, but they will be very, very fast just going forward. Racing ships are like the base archetype that almost all racers ended up with so far are interceptors because racers prefer speed over everything else. But you want to pick the right racer for the right track. The other end of the range are our, let's call them fighter bomber tunings. 
That means we trade agility for simply durability. On top of the fighters, we just keep going with this. We have gunboats for ships that are constellation-sized. We have corvettes for something like a, a hammerhead, right? So our, our hammerhead is for us is our anti-fighter corvette. Frigates are basically the biggest ship that players can control in the universe right now. So we're talking Idris, we're talking 890 jumps. I know that Idris, <laughs> players cannot control the Idris, but we're talking uh, ships like the Carrack. Those are frigates, really, really big ones, but also they will have variations in their tuning based on the brand or what the purpose of the ship is. So these are very big changes that are coming, but the main takeaway is that these archetypes are just reference frames for the type of tuning you want to give a ship. It does not mean that every ship that you have in the verse will fit a, a specific archetype. There are ships which are in between. For example, the Sabre. Is it a medium or a light fighter? It's somewhere in between. The Cutlass has not the durability of a heavy fighter, has, however, the turret of a heavy fighter, so it's somewhere in between. So there are ships which do not fit exactly into these frames. But this is the beauty of it, because these ships, we can make them fit anywhere where they want. We just need to make sure that the balance between them is right. Not everything fits in a box, and it would be very boring if it did. Precision targeting is a new way of aiming at specific parts of a ship. You get the zoomed in picture of your target, and it allows you to paint over specific components of the ship. So if you want to take out the thrusters, you simply aim towards the thrusters and your gimbals will make sure the bullet lands exactly where you're aiming. It's a big rework of the entire target system with the goal to make it not only fit master modes, but also fit the problems we've had with target in the past, which is to control the weapons and the accuracy. Since master modes is bringing everything closer together and master modes is slowing everything down, we need to make sure that the weapon speeds are adjusted as well. It will reduce your fire rate, it will therefore decrease the spread and allow you to be more precise where you hit. Good examples for that is if you want to fire at a ship from very far away and you want to make sure that your shots hit. An even better example is if you have a light fighter and you want to help take down a larger ship. You will not be able to take down the ship by yourself, but you can help other players by crippling the turrets with ballistic cannons, for example, and other subsystems. So that allows you to see better what you're currently targeting. What we're doing is we're bringing all weapons into three archetypes. We have the anti-fighter weapons that have higher fire rate and a higher velocity that allows you to hit targets such as a horde of gladiuses. And then we have the anti-material weapons. Anti-material weapons is the one you bring out when you and your friends want to hunt a hammerhead. It's got the highest damage of all the weapons. You want to deal as much damage as possible, but the target is big and it moves slow, so you don't have to worry as much about actually hitting the target. And then we have unspecialized weapons, which are in between the anti-fighters and the anti-materials. So this is better because it gives you a lot of options to how you want to attack the target. You can just, you know, spray and pray that your shots are going to hit, or you can go into the precision targeting mode, see all the sub-targets that you have available, and then pick out which of these sub-targets you actually want to attack. Next to basically seeing what you're actually hitting, you also just get the stunning view of that big ship that you're targeting, right? Like it's, it's, it's a full screen, zoomed in view on your target. You can see it in all its like glory. You can see all the parts you can shoot off. I think it's great. We've been really happy with the results so far. We've seen a massive difference in the way combat works and what the players are actually doing within combat. And that's been really good to see. There's still some small things we're working on right now to kind of solve, but we're really happy, you know, we're kind of most of the way there at the moment. The next big thing that the new aiming system has is the removal of the so-called N-1 system. That means that when you have a gimbal attached to a ship, the weapon attached to the gimbal goes down one size. At this point in time, after like lots of testing, we're pretty confident that we don't want the system anymore. So in the future, if you have a size 3 gimbal on your ship, it will carry a size 3 weapon. But we're actually going further with this because from 3 to 3 onwards, you will not be able to mount fixed guns on your ship anymore. In addition to that, all the turrets, however, will get gimbals. So this is a requirement because of the precision aiming mode, because the precision aiming mode we also want to be able to use on turrets. And 
We need a way to make the bullets fly where we want them to fly without cheating. So this means all turrets, they will get gimbals on their guns so they can properly lead. But to still keep turrets more powerful in terms of their weapon employing capabilities and also because tur turrets cannot just, you know, jump on the way out of the way, the auto gimbal mode will be something that's exclusively available to turrets. So pilots will still be able to manually gimbal their weapons with, you know, either tying it to their controls or by looking around. But only turrets will be able to use the auto gimbal system because there's like turrets are supposed to be very, very dangerous. And so players just have the choice how to apply the damage the best. However, because auto gimbling is also in an assisted mode, it will come with a reduction in fire rate, just to keep things things fair. So the uh, feedback, it has been going pretty well. We've been really happy with working with the community who's been playing this to kind of fine tune it and make the changes needed. And we have made a lot of changes based upon these feedback. Most of the feedback that we've been getting has been pretty positive around squadron battle, where there's some pretty good group combat dynamics players are reporting positively on. There's some really cool gameplay emerging, such as how players evade now is quite different. You have to drop chaff, break your target lock, break away, and like find your opportunity to break away from your, your pursuing ship. What we can see at the moment is that players are very happy with squadron battles. Players are not very happy with the 1v1, so this is more an area where we have to improve. Of course, there are some very detailed feedbacks about uh, some tuning choices, how we should make some type of archetypes better rather than not. But in general, this is going to be mostly appreciated. The players are really enjoying the different roles that we've got. The interceptors are quite successful. There's been some pretty good feedback around the Buccaneer. We've probably still got a little bit of work to do around the Lightfire class and 1v1s, but other than that, it's been Pretty good. It means you can you can stay closer. You are much more in control of staying in a closer formation with with other people that you're playing with. When we do our, our regular play tests, we can actually fly in our own version of a formation, and we can track targets without being several kilometers off each other. That's your version of a formation. Our version of a formation is generally, if we can see each other still, and and we're not accidentally shooting each other, I'd I'd consider that a good formation. I'm not sure that's, I'm not sure that's the textbook definition of formation. <laughs> I can see you and not crash into you. That's not a formation, Josh. It's, it's, it's a win if at least two of, of uh, the four of us manage to make it away in one piece without any friendly fire incidents. So the thing that excites me the most about Master Modes is if you just watch the footage of players dogfighting at the minute, you can really see how close all of those ships are. And it just feels so much more cinematic. It's really about the foundation of the, f of the whole flight experience moving forward. Because I fully understand that this isn't a game just about combat. We want to communicate that players who want to do combat, they'll go into the master mode for combat. But if you want to go from A to B, you've now got a mode where you can do that without being harassed as much. So that's going to be a big plus for the game. It's leveling the playing field a little bit more now. As we slowly breathe more life into each one of these ships, you're going to know this ship by the back of your hand. People seem to like uh, how much more frantic and intimate all the fights are in the arena commander testing that we've done so far. And I'm looking forward to hearing people's thoughts once we've rolled it out across all the ships. Not everything that is in 323 you can see already in the master mode, AC mode. It's, um, there's a lot more stuff coming, especially to weapon treatment, how we use capacitors, etc. But overall, based on the feedback that we got so far and also from increasing player numbers, we're pretty confident that we're on the right track. So master modes and the gunnery system and the whole combat experience is a huge undertaking for us and we cannot do it without you. So we want you to play it, we need your feedback. Be honest, tell us what you don't like. Please also tell, tell us what you like um, so we can make all this space combat game great together. So what we learned this week? Well, we learned that with Master Modes comes a rebalancing of ship performance into dedicated archetypes. That these archetypes are simply where tunings start and will be grown from to ensure that each ship and vehicle provides a unique experience going forward. And that precision targeting, weapon gimbal, and balance changes all combine with Master Modes to provide a more involved, visceral combat experience for pilots when they arrive in the upcoming Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Not
mancingannya mano. <laughs> <laughs>